Hey guys, Charlie here, back again with another video. And in this video, we're continuing our look at how you can have some fun with triads. And specifically in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can have some rhythmic, or not rhythmic, but some rhythm guitar approaches using these triads just to play some cool uh, chordal ideas without playing actual full chords. There's a lot of benefits to this. It cuts through the mix. It's a little bit more uh, chord fragments, so they're easier to play, and um, they also just sound a little bit cooler because you can introduce some melodic movement, which you don't always have the luxury of doing when you're playing standard bar chord shapes. So for those uh, bunch of cool reasons, it's definitely something worth learning. So let's go ahead, I'll play the example, and afterwards we'll break it right down. Let's check it out. All right, nothing too adventurous there, but it, this is the kind of part that adds some awesome uh, vibe and atmosphere to a, a song. And um, as you can hear that melodic movement, it just kind of moves things along a little bit rather than just kind of playing, say, C, F, A minor, and G. Nothing wrong with that but it just doesn't quite work with a kind of a big sound like I've got dulled in here with a lot of uh, delay and reverb. So instead, I did this. All right, so let's look at where all that comes from. Remember, we're looking at a one, four, six, five progression. C, F, A minor, and G. So for the C, I obviously those are the two notes that I want to play there, the fifth note on the G and the fifth note on the B. But instead of just playing C like that, I went. So I played five and then three, and then I hammered to five. And then I picked the same two notes again, but then I, I, I slide to six from five on the B. Pretty cool, right? So for the C chord, for the F chord, for the A minor chord, I do the same that I did for the C chord. And then for the G chord, I went in reverse. So again, I had these two notes, and then I slide back with my middle finger. So first, I play the, I do the, the pull off, but then when I have these two notes, it's like a G sus four, which I then resolve to a normal G because that's my triad right there. Okay, so real quick. Okay, and that's all the power of triads. Let's play that same example again one more time with the track. Right, so as we know, we can play C, F, A minor, G. Over here in a third position, I can also play it over here in the eighth position, C, F, A minor, G. All right, now what can we do from a chordal perspective that's gonna be similar to what we did here with some embellishments and so forth? Well, let's check that out with the track now, and afterwards we'll break it down. All 
right, so again, it all starts with the triad shapes. We had C, F, A minor, and G. Now you remember that for the previous C that I had over here, I did a hammer on on the second string. But I can't really do it over here because um, it's going to sound like it's going to have that fourth in there, which doesn't quite work that well for the one chord. So instead of putting my movement on the middle string, I'm putting my movement here on the G string. which is again the, the second to the third note in the scale. Okay, but then, so it's basically the same as that, but I just played it over here. Then I did that exactly what I did for the C, I just played it over here for the F. Then I did the same that I did for the C over here for the A minor except I added in that one note. Because when I just play these two notes over the A minor, and I could leave it like that if I wanted to, but that gives me an A minor seven. But then I just added in that A note again, potentially with a hammer on. And then I played both of these together when I slide it back to the G. So as you can see, C, F, a minor to G. Okay, and that creates some nice motion again because instead of just playing a uh, simple C, F, A minor, G, there's no movement there, but with this, There's a little bit more movement. Let's check it out now that you've seen the inner workings of that part. Let me play that part for you again one more time. Here we go. So hopefully that all makes sense. Let's now go and check out the third place where we can play C, F, A minor, G. Remember we added over here, C, F, A minor, and G. Also C, F, A minor, and G. And then of course we've got C, F, A minor, and G. So let's take that same approach and play um, some fragmented chords with uh, some slight embellishments, and let's see what we can come up with um, in this 12th position here on the guitar neck. Here we go. So there's nothing really to it over there. Remember my chord shapes uh, for C, I add that. So then simply just add, because for this C we add, then we add, and now we've got, okay, for the C and now for the F, remember the F looks like this, but I can actually keep this G note because that technically kind of makes it an, an F add nine. So that can totally work. And then for this A minor, instead of um, playing the A note as part of that A minor, I can play exactly the same two notes. Then this becomes A minor seven. And then I went to the D note. And remember, this is my G triad. So these two notes and these two notes are exactly the same. And that is why I can...
play those embellishments. So hopefully this all makes sense and you understand how we can take these triad shapes in all three positions, which of course will be our root position, our first inversion and second inversion, by adding in some embellishments uh, with you know kind of a, a nice big delay and reverb sound, just to add some choral approach without playing typical chords, instead playing fragments and using those embellishments where we hammer on from another note just to go ahead and create some movement. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this lesson on triads. In the description below, you'll be able to see some additional resources that you can get access to. And if you want to learn more about our triad workshop, which is part of our Worship Guitar Skills Academy, we go into great detail to show you exactly how you can learn the triads, how you can practice them, and how you can get them dialed in so that they're available to you um, at a moment's notice. And then also I can play both rhythm and lead using these shapes. All of that info is in the description box. And then if you're not yet subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon because then you'll get notifications whenever we release new videos just like this one. All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you on the next one.